Welcome to Fantasy Sports Daily with Kyle Elfrink and Ray Flowers, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to use the promo code FSD20 for a 20% discount on the products over at FantasyGuru.com. It is another day in March, which means it's another day of recapping another fantasy baseball draft. We welcome you to Fantasy Sports Daily. Kyle Alfred and Ray Flowers with you. We are powered by the one and only FantasyGuru.com. A pleasant morning or afternoon. Surely there's somebody in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean hanging out with us today. Uh, wherever you are, hope you're doing well on the Friday. Uh, always easier to do a show on a Friday when you know, hey, it's the weekend and we get to settle in, watch a little... Spring training baseball get closer and closer to draft day. For some of you, this will be a draft weekend, uh, no doubt. I know every week we add more and more names and more and more teams to the ledger as draft season is in effect. And that's the same for this guy uh, with that crazy looking Oakland A behind him. That's kind of intimidating. Um, Ray Fly, is that Tyler Clippard? Who the heck is that? That is absolutely Tyler, Tyler Clippard, Kyle. Good call. I got, I've got the 2018 2018- picture folder open and i'm using that for all our team previews yeah the, the modern day kit to colby that's that's how i knew it was maybe a uh, tyler clifford there you know i, I would have guessed anybody else maybe jesse chaff is but that's not the case uh ray you you had another draft yesterday we got a lot of things to get to and we'll get yep. to them momentarily but you had the sirius xm uh fantasy host draft which was you know i was on the hosting side you were on the drafting side very different setup um in in that league it was a small league it had a very, I don't know about awkward, you know, maybe it's the reality of the situation, but you can see it there. It's a one catcher league. It's seven starting pitchers. It's three outfielders. It's only five bench spots. And Ray, there's the team that you put together. What'd you think of it? Yeah. Doing a little out of order here, but what the hell? Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, when, when you, you have to draft based upon how your room is drafting, in what your league setup is. And in this setup, it was different. And normally I wait on relievers and everyone was waiting on relievers in this draft. So I said, you know what? I'm going to zag here. I'm going to grab a couple of relief arms. I'm going to try to get, you know, 50, 60 saves here and not necessarily win the saves column, but be very competitive there. I didn't want to wait because it's a smaller league in terms of who we have to utilize at the starting you know, group. It's a smaller league in terms of the bench size. So I, I changed up my strategy in terms of how I handled the bullpen, which was probably the major change. But I think that, you know, overall, we, you know, I talked with you on the broadcast on Sirius, you know, my number one pick, Kyle Tucker, went 30-30 last year. My number two pick, Francisco Lindor, went 30-30 last year. My number three pick, Randy Rosarino, went 20-20 last year. My number four pick, O'Neill Cruz, has gone like 19-13 in 100 games played. I yeah. thought I got a lot of power and speed there. Um, I thought the team came together pretty well. And with only 12 teams and one catcher, I was able to wait to the very end to get my catcher, Kyle. Yeah. I felt really good about it. But, but you had to be a little upset, Ray, because William Contreras yeah. went right before yeah. your pick of Kiebert Ruiz. <laughs> yeah, I have them both on the same tier, but I do have Contreras higher. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it was one of those things. And I Again, I think Kiebert Ruiz is perfectly fine in this setup, but so close, Kyle. Uh, and there will be trades in this league. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, guys like Jim Bowden, Steve Phillips uh, are certainly a part of that league. Former Major League Baseball player uh, Jensen Lewis, uh, formerly a reliever with the Cleveland uh, Indians slash Guardians. He's a part of this league. And, of course, a uh, round robin of other fantasy experts hanging out in there. If you want to listen back to that draft, it's available uh, for you SiriusXM subscribers on the SiriusXM app. Um, this weekend, we're, we're kind of light. At least I am on the drafts uh, next weekend will change. Got a lot of tout wards action coming your way and uh, good luck to anybody who's drafting this week. Hit up Ray in discord for any help. Better, better way of getting a hold of you, Ray discord over Twitter. Is that kind of the, the, the run right now? Yeah, I will say this Twitter. I answer discord. I answer because okay. I know you're a paying subscriber. So yeah, you get more information. There's more ability to go back and forth in discord. Uh, the, the draft book was just updated this morning. So that's available now. Uh, early next week, I'm updating all the points rankings. I'm updating the souls rankings. So those will be available next weekend, assuming that the following weekend where you go to Tout Wars and the weekend after that is where the drafting gets really hot and heavy here in the month of March. We will tell you more about that draft guide momentarily, but let's tell you about uh, today's show. Uh, you see Ray building a seven-man pitching staff yesterday in that league. Most of us uh, work around the idea of building a nine-man pitching staff. Today, Ray will uh, give you the cheat sheet. He'll give you, he'll give you the uh, recipe, if you will, for building 
the ideal pitching staff. That word ideal is a good one, Murray, because you're not saying it's perfect. You're just saying this will set you up best for success, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we'll get into why I use the word ideal and all that. But yeah, I think that uh, I basically took the tact of three ways to address pitching in a draft and we'll see how it went. So we'll go through that. It's part of the uh, Fantasy Guru Draft Guide. We are promoting that column today. Do a different column each and every day here on FSD. Uh, we will take a look uh, for the final day at the starting pitching position today. We've been doing it all week long. Take a look at uh, rookies and prospects. Um, not a, a loaded class. I mean, there are obviously some guys who will be drafted, but um, it feels like uh, it's a little thinner than maybe we were in the previous two or three years, which is just how things kind of cycle. Uh, may have something to do with the COVID year, too, back in 2020, as we kind of pay the price, if you will, for, in effect, having no minor league baseball in 2020. So uh, we will get into that. Uh, our team preview, been waiting for this one. The Oakland A's are on the docket, uh, no longer featuring Tyler Clippard, although eh, if he was willing to pitch, the A's would probably bring him in on a major league minimum. Uh, but they still do have a team. They play baseball. They got uniforms and everything, as the old joke goes. Um, I don't know if they have much of a stadium. Ray, do tell me this. For yeah. all sake, are you going to get out to the Coliseum before the A's leave town? You should really make one last visit. That team has been with you since birth. I know you're a Giants guy. Right. Hey, but you got you got to get out to the Coliseum to see how far it has degraded. You know, I what I ideally, this is a good idea. I should find out when they play on the weekend and go to the tiki bar for Vidden island in the east bay and also go to the baseball game that's actually yeah. so you know you go to the tiki bar at two in the afternoon get a little tipsy it doesn't matter if the a's lose or not you go to the <laughs> night game that's actually not a bad plan i'll look into that well i'll give you an even better one ray you go to the yeah. tiki bar for a brunch or maybe right. a you know drinking lunch uh catch an afternoon game on a saturday with the a's yeah. and then maybe you can get over back to san francisco for a saturday night game That'd oh be wow fun. Wow, Kyle, you really are. A, that's a lot. I don't know if my lady friend would uh, enjoy double games, uh, especially if I've been drinking all day, but it's good. Well, you it. ride Bart, Ray. Come on. Oh, okay. Get on Bart. Okay. You got this whole system. Make use of it, damn it. That's true. Yeah. Uh, of course, that doesn't drop you off at the Giants Stadium. You know? how, how far can you get to the Giants Stadium, like close on Bart? Bart's not so close, but there are yeah. there are, there's a there's a couple spots where you can get on Cal. Uh, why am I saying uh, the train? The Why local metro, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and the so city. that goes like a five-minute walk to the park for the Giants. Okay, so you have to find one of the stations that has uh, Bart in the train. You know, the kind of the exchange point. Uh, if you take Bart, it's a little bit of a walk uh, to the Giants game. Okay, but Ray can do it. He, he can, can do, do it. it. I think that's a hell of a Saturday. Just get out there for one last time. What one last go around with the Oakland A's? I think they deserve it, and you deserve it. Uh, here in 2024. Um, other things going on. Ray is a big fan of Brian Bayo. So are the Boston Red Sox, uh, inking the young pitcher to a brand new deal. Um, elsewhere in the AL East, the Toronto Blue Jays uh, rotation, who's in, who's out. We'll give you the latest there. And we're just a few days away from uh, NFL free agency. I think officially it's like March 13th, March 14th. Um, there are moves being made. There are two guys being cut. Michael Thomas looks like he's done with the Saints. Uh, he will be a free agent. Don't know if it matters, but uh, we'll get you said with some NFL news and notes. We appreciate everybody jumping into the chat room. If you got any questions, any comments, by all means, you can uh, let us know in there, whether it's YouTube, our Facebook, our X, just hit us up on that front. Ray, why don't you hit us up with the uh, specials that are going on right now at fantasyguru.com? Yeah, and there was a discussion in the Discord room. Remember, you can obviously view this on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Elite Plus Network. You can see it on the website if you go to the Elite Plus section at the top. You can also find us on podcasts if you don't want to look at us. You just want to hear us. <laughs> Pandora, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. We're available in all those spots. Just type in Fantasy Sports Daily. Um, the offers at the website, we got you rocking and rolling still. The early bird pricing on baseball. Use the promo code FSD20, FSD20. Get you a 20% discount. So the full season, not just preseason, full season baseball product. Is forty dollars with that discount? Uh, the price should be going up any day now, so use it now while you still can. We've got the franchise mode for football. That's the off-season mode where you get to review everything that happened in two thousand twenty-three. You can basically get the preview with all our draft prospect status talk and all that. That's only nineteen ninety-nine. And then there's the all-in package as well, which gets you NBA, NHL, MMA, PGA, NASCAR, soccer. I'm running out of <laughs> terms to use here it's all of them in one package it's the all-in package right now that's 75 dollars for all of those sports and includes dfs and wagering so three main oh four in the march madness package right ah, now is 19 
So I can't forget that. So we're on fire at fantasyguru.com, pal. Right. When the fantasy guide is kind of done by the time we get to opening day, and I know it's not done, it's still, you know, there might be some things evolving. But um, if somebody were to print out your whole fantasy guide, how many pages do you think it ended up being? So so in the old days, I used to create a PDF with, and I would, it would grow, but it's like, yeah. it's just too much damn work formatting. <laughs> and uh, it's a great question. And I don't know the answer. I could guess, I, I'll try to guesstimate it. You yeah. know, um, but I would say we're probably going to have, I mean, 150 articles and, <laughs> you know, 1,500, 2,000 words each. I mean, yeah. it's probably a couple hundred pages, I would say. Easy. I would think so. Yeah. Easy. Then you throw yeah. rankings on top of that. Yeah. So that's what you're getting, folks, with that draft guide. Think of like a draft guide with over 200, if not 300 pages. Might be in more. your hands. That will be, yeah, it could be, somebody needs to print it out, you know, yeah. kill, couple, kill, kill the rainforest. A <laughs> yeah. couple of those articles, seven, 8,000 words. I mean, there, yeah, there's some big stuff in there, Kyle. Okay. One of the things in there is building the ideal pitching staff. That is the column that uh, Ray and I are spotlighting today. This is, uh, I believe, something Ray's done for a number of years. I think pretty well every year he kind of uh, lays out a plan. Ray, uh, let's start with that uh, word ideal. You said you'd kind of say why you chose that word. Mm -hmm. what, what are we getting at with uh, the ideal pitching staff and kind of this column as you build it each year? Yeah, and we'll throw up a graphic here in a second. But basically, here's what I did is I thought there's three main ways to draft pitching. There's early there's middle, there's late, right? Some people go right away and try to do pocket aces two of the first three rounds. Some people, which is generally how I draft, kind of, you know, guy in the fourth round, guy in the eighth round, guy in the 10th round. And then there's the people that say, I'm not taking any pitchers to start. I'm waiting, right? Like these guys, I can't trust them. So there's three main ways to do it. So what I did is I looked at ADP at the NFBC since the start of February. And I looked at each 12 round, I, I assumed a 12 round, uh, 12 team league, excuse me, five by five. 23 players, 14 hitters, nine pitchers. So the traditional league set setup. Here are the 12 picks in the first round. Here are the 12 picks in the second round. Here are the 12 picks in the third round. And not by my rankings, but just by the ADP, because that's the only way to fairly do this. Choose the best player per round with the general idea of early, middle, or late pitching. Mm -hmm. And then try to see how the three squads turn out. And and this is kind of a series for those who get the draft guide. It's, in effect, kind of three different articles. But... Ray has done us a favor this morning. I think he has shrunk a list down to kind of what would your team look like if you did the heavy pitching, going pitching early, if he's played the middle rounds for pitching, or if he said, you know what, I'm going to go old fashioned. I'm going to wait on pitching. So Ray, there are the three columns. And again, this is kind of based off ADP and, and nobody can say, oh, this is a, what is, you know, every draft room is different, all that stuff, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Let's start with the early pitching team, Ray. This is in effect going pocket aces, right? right. And right. Mm -hmm. this would be Strider in the first round. So you get the best pitcher. I think you assume the sixth pick of the draft. So that's very doable. Right. And then coming back, Corbin Burns, very doable. So going heavy with the pitching, the question always is, what do you think of the hitting if you go that heavy with the pitching? You know, and I, I, I admitted this in the article, it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it would. You know, maybe it's because I'm a great fake drafter and putting <laughs> a team together. And maybe it's because I'm choosing guys I like. So there could be some bias here. But I, I was kind of surprised that it turned out better than I anticipated. Hmm. Uh, now, again, this is this. You, you look at the team here and, you know, you've got a guy like Cedric Mullins. His leg is beat up. We don't know what Wyatt Langford, when he's going to yeah. debut. We don't know. But Walker Bueller, and when he's going to debut, you, get, you know, Braxton Garrett's got a little bit of an issue that he's dealing with. We got Byron Buxton on this team, and who the hell knows? So, you know, it's one of those things where there are obvious chances, but in general, the team was better than I anticipated. And it's a fact of life. If you go with pitching in the first two rounds, you're not getting one of the true stud hitters. And, and Ray, you'll see Michael Harris, Arandio, Rosarino. Those are very fine players. But for most everybody, they don't consider them fantasy superstars. They're just good players. So that is kind of the price you can play. Now, at the back end, you're going with a lot of hitting. And you mentioned upside. I mean, got Byron Buxton is Mr. Upside. Chris Bryant is a lot of upside there. So you know, you're hoping one of those two guys kind of goes back to, or even Trevor Story, would you have him in the 15th round? You know, one of these guys kind of re-emerges. Uh, let's go to the second team. This is one where you did not draft pitching early, say in the first, I don't know, three, four rounds, maybe even five rounds. So you'd kind of tackle perhaps rounds five through 15, roughly. Maybe it was more pitching than hitting. Uh, what'd you think of this squad for the ideal pitching? Staff? Yeah, I am biased because this is generally how I draft. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you wait here and the, the top three guys on this team ended up being on the hill. If we look at it, Logan Webb, Yuri Perez and Joe Ryan. Sounds great to me. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we've got the, the 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 consistency in the innings with Webb. We've got the potential dominance of Yuri Perez. And then as we you and I have discussed, Joe Ryan's some people sleep on a little bit. So I think that started out great. Uh, you know, you look at Hunter Green, a huge arm there. Shane Bieber for the bounce back. Brian Wu, you know, the Alex Lang, Nick Lodolo. So I think that you end up taking a little risk here because Wu is, you know, we don't know for certain. Lodolo, we don't know with his health. Lang is certainly not an elite reliever by any means, but he's got the potential for 25 plus saves. So I think the pitching staff for me, I'm very comfortable with that. Other people might look at it and say no. But I think to the point you raised earlier, Kyle, you know, look at the first four rounds here. Kyle Tucker, Bryce Harper, Michael Harris, Randy Arena. Bangers. Like mm-hmm. I'm my offense is rocking and rolling with those four guys at the top. Well, and, and further with that, Ray, because I think Tucker and Harper would be considered star hitters, you know, in the fantasy landscape. So you compare it, it's like, well, do I take Strider and Burns, who are star pitchers, mm-hmm. or do I take Tucker and, and Harper, who are star hitters? And, you know, we always talk about investment costs. Nobody wants to hear this. Nobody maybe even even thinking this. But, Ray, I would argue that there is a 30% chance that Strider and Burns, one of those two guys, 30% chance, misses a third of their starts. You know, they get 20 starts instead of 30. 30, Maybe it's 20% chance of that. You know, a third of the season. And, again, nobody thinks of them that way. We all sit here and say, those guys can be banging on the door of 190 innings. That's what we're thinking but we know how pitching is. Compare that, Ray, to Tucker and Harper. What are, what are the odds of one of those two guys missing a third of the season? 10%? It's lower oh. than the pitchers, mm-hmm. at the very least. We can argue the numbers, but it's lower than the pitchers. And why I bring that up, Ray, is you're, you're trying to avoid risk early, and hitters allow you to avoid that risk early. You still have risk with your pitchers. Every single pitcher is risky. But, Ray, the the risk and investment, like you're paying a lot for Strider, there's still that same risk. You're playing a lot for Tucker, there's not that same risk. Absolutely. And, you know, I think as well that, you know, you start – you can always find a pitcher, just like major league teams do. You can always find a pitcher in the 24th round of your draft that throws 95 miles an hour and you can dream on. You can always find that. Can you find that with hitting? No, you got to then draft some guy in the minor leagues and hope three things happen for him to get promoted to the big leagues, right? So there's always an ability later in a draft to take the dart throws, if you will, on pitching that's going to be on a big league rota- you know, big league staff that's got a potential to break out, whereas the hitters, it, there's more steps that need to be climbed, in addition to the obvious point of the, the health that you that you you brought up there, Kyle. Your final column, uh, the third column in building the ideal pitching staff, this is waiting on pitching. This is something Ray Flowers 10 years ago would do. Now he kind of goes that middle lane much more often. Uh, Ray, what'd you think of uh, how you ended up here? I guess you're going without a pitcher. What is this? The first eight rounds, no pitchers? Right. Yeah. Uh, and what I see a lot of people do in in you know is that when they employ this, they're off. I mean, how can you? clown an offense that looks like this yeah. tucker harper harris eras arena bellinger o'neill cruz will smith nolan arenado i mean it's boom 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 right and then you start looking at the pitching staff and it's like all right you have to make the decision do i start grabbing these mid-level reliever arms if you do this or do i just go starting pitching in this one i went mid-level reliever so i got justin Steele, evan phillips then it's bailey ober which you know with the innings could really step forward shane bieber who needs a rebound Gavin Williams, who needs to grow, right? Uh, Braxton Garrett, who needs to stay healthy. Uh, Reed Detmers, who needs to take a step. Nick Lodolo, who needs to take a step. Cal Harrison, who needs to take a step. Mm-hmm. Some people are really comfortable with this build because we saw it yesterday with Cal Harrison, six strikeouts in two and two-thirds innings. We know Nick Lodolo could be a dominant force. We've seen Reed Detmers have a month here or there where he's been fantastic. To me, there's just a, so much risk here that this is one of the, this build is one of the, I'm going to finish top three or bottom three kind of builds. And not to say that's how it's going to work because there's trades and there's the waiver wire. But I do think that in this scenario, you end up taking more risks than I'm personally comfortable with on the Hill. It could absolutely work, Mm -hmm. but on the draft, I don't walk away from the draft in this style, Kyle, feeling great about the way the team looks. I, I think you, you brought up two words that are very critical. If you go this route, it's trades and waivers. Ray, there, there will be guys undrafted who end up, you know, Nestor Cortez of two years ago. You know, these guys who emerge and they have that one shining moment. Justin Steele may have been that guy last season that people didn't draft in their league. And all of a sudden they didn't, I guess, read Ray Flowers' breakout pitcher piece. They would have known to draft Justin Steele. But, you know, that's what you're kind of counting on. And trades are critical. 
Because, Ray, this is how teams are built. Somebody has too much pitching. Somebody has too much hitting. This team probably at a point has too much hitting. And so you get to July or you get to June, and that's when you want to make your trade. So th this can work. But like you said, Ray, it's it's a little more of, of knowing that you're going to have to make roster moves throughout the season. So if your league is one that trades a lot, I think this is still in play. If your league is one that, man, it's pulling teeth to get people to trade, this can be difficult to live with. Yeah, in this third plan, there's three words in italics in the write-up over at FantasyGuru.com, and it's embrace the risk. Like, yeah. you've got to embrace it. And part of the risk is what Kyle's talking about. Can you maneuver your team? Even if you have the pieces, if they're, they're uneven, though, for you, can you maneuver those pieces on the trade market to make your team more balanced? The answer is, hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, – it, it, and again, I'm not going to say this can't work because I know this can work. But I think it does put you a little bit behind the old eight ball to start – if you're comfortable with that and you're willing to let, let it ride, as they say, I think it can win. Love this column and love how you uh, presented uh, those three plans so people can kind of look at it and see what they're comfortable with. But that is a very useful column. Building pitching, so critical on draft days. So check that out, Fantasy Guru Draft Guide. Building the ideal pitching staff. Um, it is available right now to uh, check out. Now, following up on that, Ray, um, let's get, I guess, into to guys that would maybe be a part of that third plan. Mm -hmm. Yep. The waiting on the pitching plan. Uh, today, as we wrap up the position, uh, we're going to talk about starting pitchers who are young, starting pitchers who are prospects, starting pitchers who probably, to be honest, um, aren't in the big leagues in April or May. You know, they may be more summer guys. Now, I don't know if this kid, Ray, is going to be showing up. Maybe with the A's, maybe Tampa will trade this guy to the A's and he'll be starting by September. I don't know. <laughs> That's a little younger than we're talking about, well, right? <laughs> I felt a little bad because it's like, should we exploit the kid? And I'm like, oh, what the hell? He's got a Little League logo on his arm. It's on the internet. Let's throw That may be Jackson Holiday two years ago, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Um, as we look at the prospects for this year on the pitching side, and I noted this earlier, there's obviously this name at the top, Yamamoto. Mm -hmm. And Ray, he's being drafted as an SP1. We, we had that draft yesterday. Right. I think he was the seventh pitcher or something off the board. So people are in on Yoshinubu Yamamoto. We've talked about him and people are seeing him. These other names, Ray, um, I would say a majority of them, 75% of them probably do not break camp with their big league club. Skeens, Jared Jones, Kate Horton, Jackson Job. Um, I had Rhett Louder on this list with Cincinnati, uh, Ricky Tiedemann mm -hmm. with Toronto. Um, you know, they could, but right now it's not extremely likely. But a guy like Kyle Harrison is, is pretty well certain. Gavin Stone could be. What I'm getting at is for the most part, Ray, about 80%, 75% of these names are kind of draft and stash, draft and wait, and kind of hope they get called up early. Yeah, and I made a mistake. I should have put Ricky Tiedemann on this list. Uh, mm -hmm. He was kind of my guy last year, and injuries held him under seven innings, I think, when it was all said and done. But he certainly deserves to be on this list. And, you know, you're right. The fact that this, this group is light compared to years in the past. This is a much more offensive uh, prospect group this year. Uh, the majority of these guys, I mean, Yamamoto, it's because it's his first year, but we all know he's no rookie. So that's yeah. kind of cheating. But, you know, there it is. These other guys all have, you know, big arms. And especially like the first two guys, like Kyle Harrison and Paul Skeens, like those arms are electric. What does it look like? When do we see him? Well, in the case of Harrison, he might be the Giants number two starter on opening day. Good God. Um, <laughs> oh, it's not I, the worst thing in the world. No, but I mean, seriously, let's throw 40 really innings. The same thing when Madison Bumgarner was a rookie. I well, think. maybe Kyle, but he's thrown 40 <laughs> innings in the big leagues and he's our number two starter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Skeens obviously is the one everyone talks about. He was throwing 100 the other day. He's the number one pick. Uh, when will we see him with the Pirates? Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's June. Maybe it's May if things go wrong. Maybe it's July. So, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty here with these guys. We've got the rookies ranked over at fantasyguru.com. We've got scouting reports on these guys over at fantasyguru.com to try to help people kind of get a sense of where these guys are at. But most of the players in the top 20, as an example, are offensive players this year. Yeah, it is uh, certainly more bats than arms. And the reality of it, Ray, is, is when you look at, you know, these guys and what you can expect, there's a good, even beyond Yamamoto, let's kind of take him out of discussion. Yeah. There's a good chance one or two of these guys has an effective year, you know, where they maybe get eight to 12 wins and they got a good ERA, the strikeouts are good, you know, not something where you're getting 200 innings, 
but maybe you get a 90 to 115 innings. And, and that's doable. These guys are being drafted, you know, in the 20th round or later, a lot of these names. There are also names, Ray, who have not emerged. I mean, I remember uh, Zach Gallen when he was coming up with the Marlins. That was not a name in the preseason, like at where we're at now, that people talked about that year. But then he came out in like the first month of the minor league season. He was dominating. And eventually, like, you couldn't ignore the numbers. I think he was with AAA New Orleans or something. I remember looking. Hadn't heard a thing about Zach Gallen. And then he emerges. He was okay with the Marlins. And now we know what he is. He gets traded to Arizona. He's been very good. Cy Young contender. So there will be other guys too, Ray. Like, we say, oh, it's kind of thin. I think maybe that applies more to draft day. There will be many arms that get called up throughout the summer. And for those who really want to play this game, you can find – some real gems, but Ray, you've got to find resources that you trust and kind of understand situations just because a guy's called up. Doesn't mean, Oh, he's in the rotation. Oh, he's going to be here the rest of the year. So when you get involved in Cade Horton, you know, is it a one and done? Is it an emergency start? Are they thinking bullpen to begin? And then, so that's the other danger here, Ray, is a lot of these pitchers can be brought up and sent down. We see that with Tampa Taj Bradley last year. Mm -hmm. We got excited about Taj Bradley, and the whole season was back and forth, back and forth. And when he was up, it wasn't that good. It's dangerous to get in this game, but if you hit, you know, if you pin the tail on the donkey correctly, it can really work for you. Well, and I know on the, the rundown you talked about the Blue Jays, so let's just hop into that real quickly. I mean, they've got Gaussman, Barrios, Bassett, who are locked in if Gaussman's healthy. Those three guys are locked in. Kikuchi was really solid last year. They'd like him to start. Who's their fifth starter? Is it Bowden Francis? Is it Ricky Tiedemann? Is it both guys if Gaussman's shoulder keeps barking? Do we it's see both? not Alex Manoa either. He's yeah. going to be starting the year on the IL. Right, he's not. So it's like, you know, they, they they ideally they'd have, you know, Gaussman, Barrios, Bassett, Kikuchi, Manoa. But Manoa's not there. Gaussman we're uncertain with. So these two youngsters and Francis and Tiedemann, maybe they'd throw 120 innings each that we weren't expecting, right? And there, there there's the opportunity that we, we can't easily foresee so, yeah, the, the arms are better than ever before. I think the guys are more prepared than ever before. Uh, and I think that there's a con almost a conveyor belt here. Because mm -hmm. every week we'll have this. We'll cover waiver wires. Every week there'll be a new guy, 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 a new guy. <laughs> every week is the way it's going to handle on the pitching. It's the way it's going to lay out, excuse me, on the pitching side. Uh, Yamamoto, of course, with the Dodgers, Harrison, San Francisco, uh, Mason Miller with Oakland. We'll talk about him in just a second. Of these other names, Ray. And let's just assume they don't make the big leagues. Who's your favorite? You know, we've got Skeens with Pittsburgh, Gavin Stone with the Dodgers, Jones is with Pittsburgh, Horton the Cubs, Jackson Job with Detroit, Rhett Lauder, Cincinnati, and Ricky Tiedemann with Toronto. Who's who's kind of like your favorite maybe in the 28th round to, yeah. to draft and hope on? I feel I, – I honestly, I'll say Ricky Tiedemann is my favorite. Okay. But Paul Skeens, from the guys on this list, uh, and that's kind of cheap. The, the problem with these guys, both of these guys in particular, is they could be great, but they might be Yuri Perez, right? They might throw 114 innings. So it's it's tough to, to overly draft these kind of players because you just don't know what the workload is going to look like. Okay. That is a look at uh, rookie pitchers slash prospect pitchers for 2024. Uh, next week, we get into relief pitchers here on the show. Um, a very volatile position. Probably the most volatile in baseball. We will talk it over here on Fantasy Sports Daily. Let us move along and check in with our team preview. Just mentioned the name Mason Miller. Perhaps one of the more exciting names on the Oakland A's that's actually left. Uh, not many of them left. Uh, at least a handful of guys, I think, that'll be drafted everywhere. But after that, it's kind of uh, <laughs> wild and willy. You got to be in an AL only to really get excited about drafting Oakland A's. We always start with our player preview. And, Ray, let's begin with a guy who, look at that, 32 starts last year. Um, th this is the beauty of taking somebody with the A's, Ray. As long as the guy's healthy, he's out there. <laughs> he's going to pitch. J.P. Sears, 32 starts. No one is targeting this guy. Should they at least think of this guy? Well, Kelly Green for you too, Kyle. I know that's one of your favorites. I love the Kelly Green. I'm going to make – What do you, I hope they keep the green moving to Vegas. I bet they don't but because nothing is green in Vegas except the money. <laughs> Everything else is dead outside. Yeah. I, I'm going to miss this uniform. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how that – who knows how that's all going to play out. I, I think that Sears – and you see it there, almost a strikeout an inning. You know, the ratios are okay. The problem with Sears is that he's the quintessential streaming option in a mixed league. 
where, you know, it's six innings and two runs and you feel great, or it's four innings and four runs and you're like, crap, right? Because the real issue with Sears, and everyone knows that it, it's not breaking news here, there's a lot of fly balls here and there's a ton of home runs. And, you know, luckily he plays in Oakland for now, which certainly helps that a little bit, though even if you look at the numbers, they're not drastically different than his numbers on the road. Basically, he's a he's a blow up waiting to happen. <laughs> and I hate saying that because, you know, again, when he's on, he's very solid. He's, he's a quality start option. But there's just, you know, when you see a fly ball rate of 53 percent, there's just a lot of volatility that's going to come with that. And his ratios are always a little bit in danger, especially that ERA when those fly balls leave the yard. Yeah, that that 1.8. Yikes. Because yeah. <laughs> if and, and the odds say that drops, that's what the odds say. But there will still be games likely where if he gives up three home runs in three innings, it's it's a nine spot on his on his line score. And it can can murder you uh, going into the week. OK, let's dig into four questions with this team and let's start with Mason Miller. We just mentioned his name, Ray, um, as a prospect slash rookie. We got to see him a bit last year. Now, here's the thing with Miller. The only reason we saw him a bit is because he got injured again. I mean, his whole career is injured. It's like A.J. Puck part two. And, Ray, just like A.J. Puck, it's like, is he a reliever or a starter? Sounds like this year he's not only a reliever, but maybe the closer for the Oakland A's this season. Yeah, I was having a discussion in Discord, and that's included in the package at FantasyGuru.com. Use that promo code FSD20. Uh, having a discussion about how to value Mason Miller. And what I said this morning is what I'll repeat here. Dynamic stuff. Top of the charts, elite level stuff. Massive strikeout potential, massive potential. No idea how long he's going to stay healthy. No idea how long he's going to stay healthy. And we don't know if he's going to close. He's in the mix. The A's have not said he's the closer. The A's have not said they're going with one closer. We don't know. So it's really tough to get overly excited about Miller this year. Not long term and not talent wise, but this year. Because does he end up throwing you know 65 innings out of the bullpen and, and getting 12 saves? Is he the closer? Does he throw 41 innings because of injury? He's a really tough guy to get a handle on, but you can certainly dream on the arm talent. If the A's say he's our closer, and maybe they don't, they probably won't. But if they said that, Ray, would he go top 20 on your closer rankings? I'm comfortable with where I have him right now. I'm going to say no. Um, I, I think he's the lead guy to get. I think he's the best option to have. Currently, he's 26th. I, too much too much concern about everything for me to bump much higher than that guy. Okay. Question number two with this team, uh, Zach Geloff. Here's a name, Ray, that should be of interest to everybody. Uh, came up last season and in 300 plate appearances looked the part. It was great for Zach Geloff. And when he was called up, Ray, there wasn't a rush to the waiver wire. It was like, okay, well, you know, he's decent. But nobody saw him as like, oh, that's an all-star level second baseman. That's what he played like, Ray. I mean, if you gave him 600 plate appearances, just double, you know, what he had last season. You got a guy who is, let's think about it, 2030, right? I, I mean, that could be a 2030 second baseman. I don't know if everything else holds. I don't. But last year, Ray, this is as good as you could ever have. A 70-game showcase as a rookie in the major leagues. And it's as good as he's ever going to do. Uh-oh. Um, I, well, <laughs> I hope he's not. We were talking about him the other day. I hope it's not Brett Lowry. I mean, yeah. you know, I hope it's a – now, I – all the scouting reports, everyone said solid major league player. No one saw the breakout coming last year. He does not have an outstanding skill, Gayla. Uh, he was terrific. He could go 2020 this year. He might hit 235, right? I don't think he's going to give you batting average. The counting category numbers are probably to, to be unlikely to be strong because of the team context. 15 to 20 home runs, 15 to 20 steals. I think he can do that. And the cost is not prohibitive if that's your expectation. Number three. Paying up for a story, Ruiz. I feel like you and I have talked about this maybe in different avenues over the last week or so. Maybe not so much here. But, Ray, when you talk to story, Ruiz, you talk stolen bases. Um, is it worth paying up for still after the big jump in the league in stolen bases? Um, a story, Ruiz. Yesterday, we're doing that draft. Steve Phillips jumped all over Ruiz. And yeah. and he got he, he started early with no stolen bases. Like, his first two hitters were, uh, what was it, Judge and Vlad. Mm -hmm. So he's, he kind of in my opinion, overcompensated a bit. He went Nico Horner early, and then he right. went Ruiz in like the eighth round, which I, I haven't seen that really anywhere in the preseason. Yeah, and I think that Ruiz falls into that zone where Steve drafted him, whereas you you get a couple of bangers offensively early in your draft, but they're guys that don't run, right? And so how do you, how do you handle that moving forward? Well, 
you can try to find a bunch of guys with 15 steals and piece together a sixth place finish, or you can grab Restore Reese and hope he's still 60 plus bases again. Um, his bat, as we've discussed, was poor last year. Uh, I think there's reason to expect it to improve a little bit, but still it's going to be very moderate to poor. He likely won't hit double digit home runs. He likely won't drive in 50 runs. He may not score 60 runs, even if he steals 60 bases because the offense is so bad. So he really is a one category guy. He has to fit your team build. And I'd prefer not to build a team where I have to depend on him. Cause then if you are depending on him, you have to jump his ADP because you got to get him. And that's yeah. a tough spot to be in. Question number four in our A's team preview. And uh, we'll give a little love to OBP leagues, right? Ryan Noda, just throwing him out there. Um, I, I really want zero to do with this guy in a five by five. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get to that a bit later. Uh, but in OBP, Ray, I guess you have to take a shot, don't you, on Ryan Noda? And, the, and there are going to be some ugly numbers you see there. But in an OBP league, I guess this guy has the possibility of being above average, if if not good in OBP. Yeah, and this is the Oakland A's, so there is a chance that he might hit leadoff. I mean, it's, you know, and uh, there's tons of strikeouts here. The batting average is not going to be good. This is kind of not overall the same offensive game but this is adam dunn this is joey gallo this is a guy that's crapping off and batting average mm -hmm. solid and on base percentage doesn't have the power of those two guys though he could hit 20 home runs uh he's a tr he's a traditional a he's very boring but in on base percentage league <laughs> you can bump him up the rankings a traditional a which means this year's edition of the a's <laughs> <laughs> uh new arrivals uh we talked about miguel andahar yesterday off to a good start in spring abraham toro is still bouncing around he may start with this team um, in the rotation, Alex Wood, Ross Stripling. Uh, these guys are hopefully going to get 25 starts if you ask the A's. That's what they're kind of hoping for. Uh, we mentioned Mason Miller on the prospect side. Uh, Daryl Harnays, I think is how you say it, or Arnais. Uh, we'll we'll get, figure that out as we go through the season. Uh, might be a backup infielder to start, but he is a shortstop prospect. And then there's a guy named Denzel Clark who's really raw. Uh, he's an outfielder with the A's. He's a big dude. He looks like, you know, he's kind of in that judge. He's not as big as judge, but he's a big dude um, who they hope can uh, hit the baseball pretty far. And and Ray, those guys, again, I'm not drafting them, Clark or Ernays, but, you know, you may find yourself in a spot this year in a deeper league where you take a shot for those guys when they get called up. Yeah, in my dynasty league, I'm dreaming on uh, Lawrence Butler. So we'll see, Kyle. You never know. <laughs> take a chance on who? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, um, I will say Zach Galoff, even though I okay. downed him a little bit, because it's like, that's the only guy I look at that I'm really, other than Shea Langoliers, I'm really that's, comfortable with. Yeah, that's who I had, Ray. Shea Langoliers is a second catcher. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that could be good as yep. a second catcher. I mean, the challenge or the competition is not all that great, but I think Langoliers, my pass on is Noda. Again, it's got to be an OBP, but for everybody else, I think you're out. My pass on is um. I guess Brett Rooker, because I don't think he's hitting 30 home runs again, but he okay. should hit 25. Yeah, he's fine. So, so players five through 25 on the roster pass on. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, okay. Oakland A's in the books. There you go. That's all we're giving you, right? That's all we're giving. Philadelphia, I think, next Monday is where we go. Uh, we're going to be a little short this week. I've got uh, some schedule collections, but uh, quickly before we get out of here, uh, Boston, Ray, Brian Bayo, you're big on him. And the Red Sox are six years, 55 million for the young right-hander. Yeah. There's a write-up about him in the breakout pitcher of the year column. You have to check how far, how high is he the guy that's over at fantasyguru.com. But he got that contract extension, buys out some of his arbitration years, still working on figuring out how to get lefties out. If he can do that, he'll be a very, very good pitcher for the Boston Red Sox for the duration of that deal. Walker Bueller, are we going to see him in April? We don't know, but we did see him in a live BP session yesterday, two innings, so that's pretty good. Ray was talking about Kevin Gaussman. They're hoping to get him back on the hill come Monday. Uh, Ricky Tiedemann, if, if Ray kind of piqued your interest about him, his debut in the spring is set to be tomorrow on Saturday. Alec Manoa, also with the Jays, uh, as we noted, probably going to start the year on the IL. Another one of Ray's guys, because I see this on all of Ray's teams, Nick Lodolo. Um, he's going to have his debut in the spring on Sunday. So those are a couple of things to follow over the weekend. Uh, you're in on Lodolo, right? That's correct. I am. That is a correct statement yeah. to make. Yes, I think that he's well worth taking a shot on with his ADP 250, 275, wherever it is. Finally, on the NFL side, uh, first things first, Jonu Smith. He wasn't without a team for a while long. Uh, immediately, inks, uh, I think, a two-year deal with Miami. So. There's always a spot for Jonu Smith, I guess. And I guess if that offense is adding him, he must be okay. Uh, he just pissed us all off with Kyle Pitts this year. And then uh, Michael Thomas uh, set to be released by the Saints. And Ray, a great for about four years, like mm -hmm. maybe the best in football at wide receiver. But 
as soon as the injuries hit, man, he's just disappeared from the fantasy landscape. Yeah, and there's all kinds of questions of does he want to play and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, but I made a lot of money the last handful of years doing absolutely nothing. Uh, people <laughs> and people overdrafted him. You and I warned him against it every year, but there were always Michael Thomas truthers out there. Yeah. And- they were wrong year after year. Might be fun to have a reality show with Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, and Michael Thomas. I don't know if Thomas can really hang with those other guys, but kind of getting to that point in their careers. Uh, Antonio Brown has done a wonderful job of staying in the news despite like going crazy in the <laughs> last few years. <laughs> Maybe that's why he stays in the news. Um, again, we're a bit short today. We'll make it up for you on Monday. Uh, I got some items that I need to take care of on my schedule. Uh, but, Ray, I know people can hit you up on Discord. You'll be updating the Fantasy Guide all weekend long. And, of course, we'll be back at it come uh, Monday here on the show. Yeah, everyone have a good weekend. I look forward to talking to you on Monday, Kyle. Yeah, appreciate everybody joining us uh, in chat. Um, again, hit up all the great things available at FantasyGuru.com. You've got uh, racing this weekend, golf this weekend, basketball, hockey, more baseball, of course. Uh, NFL free agency just around the corner too in a few days. So hit all that up on the website Uh, for Ray Flowers. I'm Kyle Elfrink. We will see you on Monday with Fantasy Sports Daily powered by fantasyguru.com.